Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Chopping Block Podcast. My name is Paddy Stapleton and every week I sit down with a different guest for a chat about food. Some of my guests make their living with the food and drinks trade, while some just love food. I chat to someone new every week, exploring a little bit of their lives through food. Some of my guests you may have heard of before, some you definitely won't know. But what unites all these people are the stories they have to tell about the role food and drink plays in their lives. So sit back, put your feet up, maybe pour yourself a little tipple, and enjoy this episode of The Chopping. My guest this week is a home cook who has made quite a name for himself on Instagram. I first came across him when his delicious dishes started showing up on my Instagram search feed. His food looked so good that I automatically presumed that this was a blogger from London or Paris or some other cosmopolitan city. But no, he's a purebred Leitrim man. When I followed him, I was surprised to find out that not only was he living in my hometown of Navan, but I had already spoken to him many times in Rhines, the bar where I used to work and where we're currently sitting having a pint together. I love when his latest pics pop up on my feed, but he also annoys me because his presentation is infinitely better than mine. So James Dorrigan, also known as Cook with James, welcome to the pod and thank you for sitting down with me. Thanks for the introduction, Paddy. No problem. Let's start with 20 either or questions. These are just to help us learn a little bit about you. Go into detail, fly through them, it's entirely up to you. It's just to give us a little flavour of your tastes. So, number one, fish or fowl? Fish. Red or white? Red. Butternut squash, sweet potato and mint soup topped with chopped pecans, fresh mint and parmesan. Or leek, potato and ham soup with pumpkin, sesame and walnut and cottage cheese and chilli splash. Butternut squash and the rest, I can't remember. <laughs> I stole both of those from your Instagram. Yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, dinner with friends or dinner with family? Uh, family. Scrambled or poached? Scrambled. Knife and fork or fingers? Depends on the mood, but knife and fork to be... To be proper. Proper, yeah. <laughs> uh, Master Chef or the Great British Bake Off? Master Chef. Rosemary or basil? Rosemary. Fish served with the head or fish served without the head? Without the head. Aldi or little? Aldi. Sausages or rashers? Mm, sausages a salt and a rash are killing me really <laughs> <laughs> loin of pork or rack of lamb pork Catherine Fuvio or Rachel Allen uh, Rachel Allen prawns or scallops scallops gin and tonic or jemison and ginger jemison and ginger <laughs> very quick <with> that one. <laughs> very quick <laughs> wooden board or slate wooden board pan fried sea bass with sweet potato discs Steamed stem broccoli, burnt onion, crispy chili rings, and roasted sweet corn and cherry tomato dressing, <laughs> or grilled mackerel in balsamic and soy marinade with basil tomatoes, minted peas, beetroot, spring onions, and mozzarella. Sea bass. Sea bass. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm find that hard here because my mouth is water. Really the sea, the sea, I think the sea bass one was the wedding menu that I recreated. I think that was very it, good. Yeah. Very good. During COVID. Uh, creme brulee or tiramisu? Creme brulee. Medium well or medium rare? Medium rare. And last one is a jaff cake, a cake, or is it a biscuit? I was thinking about this one. It's a, it's a biscuit, as my father used to say. <laughs> so I'm on the fence. <laughs> okay, I normally don't let people sit on the fence, but I will with that one. <laughs> so James, as I said already, I first came across you on Instagram. Were you always a food lover? Yeah, I was always a food lover um, eating. Uh, just at the start, I suppose, it was just the basics that I was cooking. There was no presentation or anything. Um, what changed? I don't know, really. Claire was, I was actually, I give Claire a mention, my wife, it was her who told me to start the Instagram page and I think between getting feedback from people and actually getting into it, watching MasterChef, looking at them and thinking, I can do that. I'm a hero, I can do all this, but uh, yeah, look. But was there, was there like a, a light bulb moment where you cook something someday and you said, wow, I can actually do this? I never... One thing I will say I have a knack for is I never stick to a recipe. Okay. So if if I am out in the restaurant and I say, you know, I have a pork belly and all the trimmings and all the bits and bobs here, I'll try and recreate that myself in my like and try and put the flavours in. So I taste food when I'm out thinking I'm able to go back and recreate them taste myself. And put your own spin on it. Put my own spin on it, more or less, yeah. But what, what brought you from the basic cooker? Like when you say basic cooking, do you mean roasts? Do you mean Meat and two veg. Yeah, it's shepherd's pie, you know, um, bolognese and, and what, stuff what, like that. What, what was the big step? Was it watching Master Chef? Was it the big step? Really, I think myself. I started getting better. Was when uh, I started eating healthily. I lost a lot of weight uh, back two years ago. I 
started kind of not that I never ate healthy but I kind of just stopped the convenience food so I give up bread completely okay. and we'd say I, if I wanted a wrap I was being thinking outside the box so I got a, two romaine lettuce leaves and filled them up with prawns and stuff and that oh, was my wrap so I think and what, what were, you, were you heavy? I was 70 and a half stone at me highest wow. I think I was hitting waist 40 Jesus, and what and did I you? I said that was the that was it. I said no, I have to, I have to change. Because looking at you now, you're you're tall and you're thin. Well, that was it. Everyone used to say to me, "You hide it well." Yeah. But they didn't realise it was wearing XXL clothes, like right. so it was nearly Giacomo esque, you know. And how much and did the, you lose? Four and a half stone. Wow. Yeah. How long did it take you? Uh, I, I'd about three and a half gone in a year. Um, was it just, tough? It was tough, yeah. But it was kind of something that. I got into it, I kept that, I enjoyed it, and I was, you know, absorbed by it, really. And it, it um, became natural. It became natural, yeah. Like, I'd never be one who kind of, you know, think I'm, because I've lost all my way, I'd never look at anyone else and say, you can do it, or why aren't you doing it? You don't want to be like that, that. that annoying. No, but I never was. Like, I was a smoker for, Jesus, since I was probably, I'd probably about 13. I'm an ex-smoker now, but I'd never look at somebody and go like smoking around like that and never judge them around like that it's a choice I took I wanted to give them up for for, for everything yeah, yeah for everybody around everything that's the same with food you and know? like I saw today your first post on Instagram was in 2017 so three years ago when did it become serious like when did you put proper effort into it I'd say from a couple of weeks I think it was March in around March April 2017 um, I'd say it was it was probably after the more you get on, I suppose, the more people who start following you. But it was not never to me about like getting this but attention. It is, bit, it is addictive, though. It is addictive. Likes, yeah, yeah, it is addictive. And you, and you, you don't admit that, but when people you don't know like something that you're doing, it's it's a buzz. You're quite, you're kind of like, especially like we'll say, yeah, we all do. We tag certain people, like the happy pair. Yeah, everyone loves the happy pair. All the lads and like. I've got personal messages back from them for about, you know, complimenting on the stuff that I've done. Yeah. And it can only make you feel that they have nearly 500,000 people following them. Yeah. And you're getting a message from them. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it kind of does give you a pep in your step to yeah. push on and move on. And, and tell stuff. me, what I love, like, obviously the dishes you're doing are amazing, but they look amazing. I mean, do you have a bit of an artist in you? Do you? No, far how, from it. Did you learn that? How did that come about? Far from I know, like... Claire would look at we'd be laughing the pictures we draw home and yeah. absolute mine, mine would be like but you, you have an eye which are, I mean there's one of your pea soup which is stunning like I was looking through them all today and I try and take nice pictures of food and I do okay but yours are nearly professional like are you good with a camera is there a background there or is it just no it's nothing it's just make it up uh, as you go phone that's all I have the phones and yeah. I never I never uh I never overthink it. Claire might say a difference. She'd be looking at me and she'd be going, well, just stand and eat the bloody thing. Do you, you be know? standing up on a stool and hanging the camera? No, never that. No, no, just I'd pop it down on the counter and I'd look at it and I'd just put it down and take maybe five or six pictures of it. I have an app. Uh, sometimes I use it Snapseed. It just kind of takes out uh, shadows or stuff like that. That's that's all I sure. ever use. Uh, there was a girl on Instagram that I asked. She's a food photographer. And she just said, just download Snapseed. She uses the odd thing just to take, you know the way yourself, if you're yeah. taking a picture and you might see your big stupid shadow of your head on top of <laughs> and her or something like that. Square iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just, it, it lightens that. But uh, no, I... I'm uh, definitely downloading that app. <laughs> it is, yeah. Snapseed. It's yeah. a great job. But your your pictures just look so good. And your fish in particular, I kind of knew when I asked you fish or fowl, I knew you go with fish because yeah. I think it shows how much better your fish dishes look that you're cooking them for yourself that you, you enjoy them yeah like fish is not everyone's taste but mm. I always the the extras the condiments with fish is always better mm. than meat like you always get your purees you always get your nice um, roasted veg and things like that but I mean even the two the two dishes I, I pulled out today sweet potato discs steamed stem broccoli burnt onion crisp chilli rings and roasted sweet corn and cherry tomato dressing like that's amazing they and, all sound like, but that's like that's what's on the plate. Yeah, right? and they do sound good. But, yeah. but I mean, grilled mackerel in balsamic and soy marinade, basil tomatoes, minted peas, beetroot, spring onions, and mozzarella. Like that, that's a, not everybody is cooking like that. I mean, do you appreciate how? Not do you appreciate, but do you know that you're you're really good at this, or is this just a hobby? It's a hobby. Um, I never in a million years dream of going into like a restaurant environment or anything like that mm. because. 
Like I'm doing it now because there's no pressure on me. It's for me. It's for the family. It's for anyone who comes over, That's friends and all that. But I think the minute you step foot into an environment where you have to make money out of it, yeah, <laughs> but the pressure starts going. And like you see, I know it's a stupid program, Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares. Mm. It's a stupid program, but you do see the pressures that's there. Yeah. Chefs who have been chefs for years all of a sudden they've lost their like love for cooking. Because, because the they're freezing stuff. It's kind of a mass pro- pro- production. Like My would say, I suppose, we all dream of winning the lotto. But winning the lotto, Claire would probably say, obviously, I buy a season ticket in Anfield. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dream would be to get like a, a small little place that has maybe six or seven tables. That you don't have to it. make money off. And never have to expand, never have to do that. And, and I'm the cook. Yeah. And that's it. Never. You don't have to worry about paying bills. Exactly. That's it. It's so that that would be it. Just just to sustain, like not even a living, just to like be cook, just to, as and enjoyment. That's it. that's it. Yeah. And tell me, when you started doing it all, and you started posting these lovely pictures, what did your friends think? What did your family think? Like, did they think, "Jesus, who's this lad with the notions?" <laughs> no, no, they all like my my family would have always known I was into cooking. Myself and my brother were uh, kind of in. We, we, we'd be kind of in competition but he still he still claims the lasagna he's the king of the lasagna <laughs> but I'd be at him as out of a jar so it's kind of <laughs> mine is all natural but uh, yeah he's no in fairness he's the the barbecue king and the lasagna king but uh, no there was no there was no like it was all but positive people coming to me you know and did you find people were looking for the invite over a bit more now that there was yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and did you feel I, the pressure no not at all no it's like a lot of people, like I'd be down home, home in Leitrim. Yeah. So I'm living up in Mead for the last, I suppose, eight years now. So love just, brought you to Mead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love is keeping me in Mead too. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you're when you're cooking now, I mean, it's, I know the stuff like Insta Life is always a bit better than normal life. Do you put the same effort into your everyday dinners, or or do you rustle up a, a stir fry with any veg you find in the house? I have, and like say, days that I'm not prepared just for work, we'd say. Yeah. If I'm in an early shift, I'd fill an Ikea bag with stuff in the fridge. Yeah. With the intention of making a curry, but it'll turn out to be a chili con carne yeah, or something, something like that. Quick. Something ran, like I'd never, but I would, yeah, no, I'd throw something together fairly quick. And do you do all the cooking at home? No, most of the time. But Claire's, she's well able to cook. Yeah. She's and just I- like, she likes me uh, slaving over. <laughs> yeah, my miss is the same. The problem, I don't know if you have this, I'm very messy in the kitchen. Are no, you? no, no, not at all. <laughs> so my miss, I used to put up pictures of, of, of cooking and my wife uh, once took a picture and sent it to her friends going, this is the mayhem that none of you see on the yeah that's, yeah, that's the same. <laughs> that, I, I, have to, I have to agree with you there, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, like, if you're cooking a special meal on a Saturday night for you and your, your wife, I mean... What are, you, what are you going to make that, that's going to what's special for you in the Saturday night I mean I, so many of your dishes are stuff that I would love to be able to cook but that, they would be really special for me to cook I mean are these dishes you're putting up are these special occasion dishes or are these twice or three times a week dishes she's so lucky every day is a special day <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's a lucky woman she's blessed dinner, <laughs> breakfast, lunch and dinner she's blessed uh, nah we wouldn't like we'd say during COVID we April was our wedding anniversary so I decided I said look I'll just recreate our wedding menu wow. so I just pulled it together and where did you get married? Trim Castle very nice yeah it was lovely and I'm very guessing nice going by what you said before you improved on all the all the dishes that they serve and put your own spin on them definitely <laughs> no no we couldn't definitely we couldn't couldn't fall Trim Castle now but it was just it was just something that we both of us said we'd do like not that we ever we we usually kind of just went away. That's what we kind of treated ourselves yes. to, and nice place and nice food. Like last year, what the years? Twenty nineteen, we went to the Heritage and Killing Art. Lovely, yeah, it was top class, and yeah. the food was. Top so, class, do you find so. food influences your travels? Um, in a way, it does. Yeah, like both of us love good food, but we also like you know you'd also go into the the pub and get an old burger and yeah. a couple of pints, and, and still quite magic. happy, you know. Yeah, so you're not a snob. No, no, definitely not, no. And uh, something I want to ask about, I was going to message you about this before, but I okay. kind of was a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> you have a plate. <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed asking you. It's a white plate with blue dots on it. And it makes your pictures pop. Jeez, which one is that? Man? I don't have See, I thought you might know about it. It's, your dishes, and the rest of your dishes are lovely. 
Oh, so is it like a bowl? It's like it? a bowl. With, yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. every time I've, I've gone to Ikea and I've gone to TK Maxx going, and I've literally said to my wife, you see, is it this one? We're yeah. looking for a plate like, like Cook with James's plate. <laughs> I don't um, purposely go and buy a plate no. for that. That was bought because it was like, uh, so the, the, between a pasta bowl and a plate. Yeah. That's the size. Mix in the middle. Because when I was actually one of the main things I done when I when I was actually training and losing weight was the the plate was reduced. So like the actual size of the plate. Yeah, the actual okay. size of your plate was reduced. So you were looking at it and it was like you it was like you packed the plate up. Whereas the same plate on a bigger plate. Yeah, it was it. actually less than what you were eating and it, it's it's a what's the word on I can't think of the mental, word. Mental yeah, thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you're like now if you're buying plates and bowls are you thinking, oh, this look good in the picture? Uh, no, no. I, um, not at all. Um, I had the pleasure of kind of doing a promo video with the lads I trained with. And um, they had kind of the videographers and all that there. And they were just, you know, it was, it was interesting to yeah. be in that environment to see how they edit stuff and all that. But they were looking through the pictures as well on Instagram of mine. And yeah. they were going, what... What apps do you, you see, use? What the camera thing. do like, you use? I, I don't know that. if you appreciate how good they are. Yeah, but I was just saying, no, it's literally. And who were the lads you did the, the training with? Uh, CBF. Uh, Colin Brady and Eamon. Yeah, Colin and Eamon, brothers. And he, um, did you, are you working with them now? I kind of, well, I don't know. Uh, they, I suppose do the lads, them? yeah, the lads fell on hard times during COVID because their business all of a sudden they woke up one morning and their business as they knew it was no, was no more kind of because they had their training was in St. Stephen's School in Johnstown and Simonstown Community Hall and COVID shut all them down so they had to put the heads together and they started an online program so what they done then was they done a three week program and they had all their training and their they put up uh, live Zoom classes on a Wednesday and a Saturday mm. and they also put like we'd say home programs and stuff like that that they recorded themselves and they asked me if I'd be interested in providing recipes for very good yeah so that I, would have been a good buzz as well to be yeah it was that. good yeah. yeah like it was good actually seeing and then there was WhatsApp groups as well so it was nice actually sitting at home in an evening and seeing a picture coming through that someone cooked of mine dish. yeah like I've I suppose like I never I'm not one for promoting myself or mm-hmm. far from it but I've since I started with the two lads, I've I started writing stuff down. So I used to be a devil for cooking, I'm and then sure, what did I put go, "What did you put on that?" And someone, "Ah, sorry, I just threw it together." But I actually, when I look and I write it down, or if I took a picture of something a year ago and look at it now, I'd be able to just sit down and write it out the menu right there, right then, knowing what it you. was, what it tastes like, and all that. So it was just nice to know that people were actually making what you came up with you know yeah and when you're cooking are you using a lot of butter or are you using oil are you are you like your dishes don't look like they're healthy dishes and i mean that in the best way. yeah are you conscious now because you've lost that amount of weight and you're 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 keeping to, your, to, to the, the wage you are now are you conscious when you're cooking not to use butter or not to use cream are you are you using coconut oil or, or whatever or is that yeah, a, or is that just depends on the dish really okay. like butter i think i suppose butter has a bad name yeah but the bad name butter has is that like if you go if you look at Mass Chef for instance, they're basting Everything. a fish in yeah. butter. So basically they're heating the bejesus out of the butter <laughs> and putting it on top to cook the top of it. Yeah. Whereas like if you make a sauce and you put a I would say I the way I make them is you put a sauce in to make it shine, you put another butter through it. Okay. And mix it through it. And that actually just makes your shot your sauce look it's look and like give it a bit of flavour as well. Yeah. But uh like, I used to be very poor at seasoning, but i now only going through picking up, like, you pick up When you say poor, bits and bobs. you put too much, you didn't know how much to put in. Oh, I never would have. I never, oh, okay. I, I didn't like salt, hated oh. salt, but I always thought of salt as the, table salt. The, as my mother eats the low salt. Yeah. She won't eat that now. It's blue and white. But yeah. she put low salt on a bloody fucking, sorry, a bloody bacon that's soaked in salt. Yeah. You know, one of these, but like, Seasoning is not that at all. It just brings it enhances the flavors and stuff. Yeah. Black pepper and Himalayan salt. salt. No, I use. Oh yeah, very swanky. Yeah, that's actually way. that's another thing I was going to say to you. A couple of months ago, I was doing a, a recipe. I think it was Donald skiing. Actually, I talked about this on, on last week's podcast, and it called for uh, bee pollen. And I put up a thing on my Instagram going, <laughs> Donald skiing. Seriously, who the f- has has bee pollen in their larder? <laughs> But 20 minutes later, I get a message with a picture from you going, <laughs> yeah. I have bee pollen. I was going, oh, of course he does. Do you have a pantry stocked of stuff? No, just the presses. Yeah. That's all, yeah. But what I mean is, do you have all these unusual ingredients? Like I'd bee pollen. Why did, why did you have bee pollen? 
I don't actually. I don't. I don't know why I actually got it. It wasn't that I got it because I um, saw it in a recipe or anything. I was literally in. I think it was Aldi or Little. I can't remember. I was literally in the aisle and I saw <laughs> bee pollen, and I was kind of like, hmm. Honey, bees, maybe it might be, yeah, this might be healthier, so I just bought it. And I just, so where somebody else might come out with a chainsaw and a, and a taint, you yeah, have a bee pollen. Yeah. <laughs> but I started putting it in porridge, like it's not, oh geez, it's not like uh, the sweet that you think it is. Is, it, is there no, flavour to it? There is flavour to it, but it's not, it's not kind of to sweeten something up, it's just, there is health benefits to it, it's like yeah. all these things. But like even would say when I, like I'd never, I'd never be a, a gin bunny, I hated the idea of gin going in thinking that you know I'd be going in looking at myself like yeah. that you know Pump it in front of me. yeah 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 I think but we all have the same fears this, this skittery yolk coming yeah. in with middle, middle arms but um, I don't touch any like protein powders or anything like that because I eat the the benefits of that You're some people wouldn't yeah, yeah. Well, like, look we all we all like a a taco fries yes. here and there a dirty <laughs> cheeseburger or something but uh, pizza at 3 o'clock in the morning the very odd time we get out would be my failure. Pizza in a pan. That's a good one. Yeah. Like from Jamie Oliver. Yeah, you've done that yeah, one as well. Yeah, yeah. And tell me, you have two little girls, Katie and yeah, Rose? Yeah, Katie and Rose. Katie is nine and Rose is a year old next month. So Very good. It's uh, kind of different sides of Very the scale. Very different. Yeah, yeah. And is Katie a good eater? She's getting there. She's um, She is good. She eats well, but kind of trying to get her more into vegetables. But Rose is bringing her on now because Rose is just a savage. Yeah. Yeah. Put Anton in front of her. And and she just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny with mozzarella cheese, the you know the, the, the grated green. one you buy it in, in, oh, in the yeah. bag. You pull it down in front of her and she just gets it and she just goes oh. <laughs> and it just like worms falling out. <laughs> and does does Katie uh does she knock a bit of crack out of you cooking? Like do you cook with her? Yeah, we she does. She 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 loves the fact that I would say I'll say, Oh, we'll put it up on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. She's all over. We made a chocolate cake, it's on Instagram. So, uh, yeah, coffee yeah. cream. Yeah. Yeah. And she loved that. Um She'll make make pizzas and what else did we make together? Oh, the um, chicken goujons with crunched cornflakes. That's a simple one. Yeah. She made them herself because her friend was coming over for a play date. And, and she wants to impress she her. She wants to impress and she made them, you know, yourself. Yeah, it's great to have that in common with her. Yeah. It'll give her an appreciation of food. Yeah. I, I hope to have the same with my little girl. And tell me, if you're uh, cooking at Christmas, do you get the families together? Are you the Christmas cook? Um, no, it just it depends on the way it falls with work, really. So, mm. like, I think, oh, in twelve years, maybe I've actually had two Christmases off, sort of thing. And but we've other times just gone down home, depending mm. on houses split houses. Like Claire's mother is a, she's a great cook as well. So you've um, never had to cook for two families together. No, no all the pressures of the no, time and the whole. No, no. Well, would you want to? I've cooked at home, you know, like all the time down through the years. Before I even met Claire and stuff, before I moved up to Mead, myself and my sister and my brother, we'd all chip in and we'd do the starter. But I'm guessing you haven't been doing the levels of what you're doing now. No, no. But even now, I, I think from what I found getting into cooking, you can put pressure on yourself. Yeah. So like a turkey will cook if you just throw it into the oven. Yeah. You, you know, you, like <laughs> I take it out and baste it the odd time if you want. But if you don't want to, you just leave it in, yeah. stick a timer on or tell Alexa, put a... <laughs> Two hour timer on. <laughs> it's it's actually true. I remember once I did Nigella's turkey and it was put in a bath and brine it and put in twenty different ingredients. It tasted like turkey. It tasted exactly. Yeah. No, turkey is turkey. I yeah. used to hate turkey. I used to always like turkey was once a year and maybe Stevens Day at home was yeah, the turkey the, curry. The sandwiches with the hangover. Just the tur- no the turkey curry. Oh, turkey curry yeah, to fill the belly for Stevens Day <laughs> torture. Yeah. Um if you're heading out, yourself and Claire are going out for a a meal or two of you, where would you go? Local or special in Dublin um, or in Leitrim or is there anywhere no, that you hold dear? As I said, we've like our first place to eat since the whole COVID thing was Ye Burger. Yeah. We went down, we just thought it was a nice place with, with rolls, we'd stick around, you know, and yeah. we went down and that was our treat. Yeah. Uh, the Central. Um, I've actually... We got Claire's brother got us. We got married in twenty sixteen. He got us the green, the green oh. one in Dublin. How was that? Oh, it's class. Yeah, it's yeah. On, it's 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 up very much on my go to list. But buying a house and having a wedding and having kids kind of yeah. keeps you away from rich and so Yeah, it was top class. Yeah, and was it was it? Were you able to, the green house? Sorry, green house. Green yeah. room. Could you just off Stephen's green? Yeah. yeah, and was it a hard menu to understand? I mean, it's very. It was all good. Yeah, it was all good. That's. Um, and I didn't know Claire 
<laughs> sneaky harsh. She had emailed him because I like I as I said I was always into cooking, but I didn't kind of take pictures of it, whatever. But uh, she emailed him to say that uh, I like cooking, and we were at the end of the, and you want the woman comes down and serve and you want your bill and all that, and then out comes the chef at the end of the service. He's a Finnish guy, isn't he? Yeah, 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 Iceland. Iceland, yeah, I saw him last year. And he comes out and he brings me into the kitchen. Wow. Yeah, into a Michelin star kitchen. Class. And I was kind of like, what, what am I supposed to do here? Like you know, but I couldn't believe it. It was tiny. Really? Absolutely tiny. Um, but he showed me the, the prep was done so like he said the, obviously you have the lads uh, cooking they do like one play like we'd say and then the rest but there's other lads then come at the end of it doing all the prep for the next day Okay. but he opened up the steamer and then there's just two pigs heads looking at him Dead. all stuffed up with the you know, eyes closed yeah. and mad but we were after eating the braised uh, pig's cheek for a starter so you've seen exactly so you've seen the, the head of the fucking pig you know, sitting in the steamer, ready to go, and then you were after eating what that was the previous yeah, night. Yeah, so that's cool. amazing. Yeah. But I couldn't get over how small it was. Um, but it must be fair, very methodical that way. They just, like, everything just runs, like, conveyor belt. Yeah, yeah it's thing. nearly, the pressure is taken away because everything is so precise. That's it, yeah. 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 That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it was class. It was absolutely class now. So, kudos to Claire for that one. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> hold on to her. <laughs> and tell me, do you get any times when you're at home without the girls, Claire's brought Rose and Kate away? What would you cook yourself? Uh, probably fish. Yeah. Yeah. And would you go to extremes and do it all properly? Or would you just... I would, yeah. No, I'd yeah. never just, I, I, like, it's not, it's not that I'm a fancy pants or anything like that. I, ne- I, and I don't need it to be presented well to eat it. I, it just happens. Just yeah. the way, it, sometimes literally, I know I put pictures up and, uh, it'll kill me I'll see a splodge on a plate that no one else will see <laughs> I'd be able to mask and go oh yeah that's such and such but it'll be like oh, Jesus I never spot that you know <laughs> so a perfectionist myself up. I'm a, but I'm far from a perfectionist this is the gas thing about it certain things like like that then like you know yourself you paint in the house and you're going around you're, painting, you're looking at it like, she's a great job and then two days later you're lying on the ground with the little one and you look up and you're like oh lord she is <laughs> Where's this plunge of the it's like a blo- it's like a brush stroke down the wall, <laughs> but um, no, I, I I I would I must say when I am cooking for myself, I still go and do present it out well, I yeah. suppose, you know. Just and even if you're not going to take a picture of it, or do you know do you know you're going to take a picture of it? No, 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 no. Some days I'll I'll make something that's completely off the chart, and uh, I'll put it up and I'll go. Nah, I don't know how to cook. I'm not going to be art picture in that. Really? Yeah. Or my phone will be in the sitting room and it'll be like, nah. Jesus, fair play to yeah. you. I'd be plastered everywhere. Um, how many cookbooks have you in the house? Are you a cookbook person? I am, but I... Uh, I'd say... I'd say if I've bought one or two myself, that's about it. Rest of presents? Yeah, rest of presents and stuff like that. I've one actually that's a brilliant one. It's Master Chef. It's kind of like a cookery school book. So it's like... Um, the basics of joint in a chicken, for instance, we'd say. So I do that regularly. I'd buy a, a, a whole chicken and, and I'd joint it. So i take the two breasts off it, that's one dinner. Yeah. You take the legs off it, that's another, and the thighs, and then you have the wings and stuff like that. And then you stick, put the, the carcass in the oven, roast it up, and then put it into water with a load of veg, boil it, and there's your stock. Very good. Yeah. And you you time to do all this with two young kids? Yeah, make time. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. No, See. it's just, it's, it was, it, like, when you know... I suppose when you know how it's done it's you kind of do. yeah not easy but you kind of just like we'd say Rose goes to bed for two hours an hour and a half two hours so like if there's that to be done you just get it done during then uh, making dinner you know yourself yeah. having dinner made and then just heat it up is is, is easier a lot of days yeah, when there's teeth coming and the yeah. stuff like that so but um, but no um, yeah I have a good I have a good uh quiet honest and uh, wife that lets me time to do all these things as <laughs> well she's so. coming out of this one <laughs> yeah 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 and tell me um, do you find people buy you food presents for Christmas for dinner or for Christmas and birthdays or? no funny enough no really yeah they're not buying you cookbooks or no no um, I, have a cook- I would say a, the cookery book was me mother and father and uh, there's a few Jamie Oliver I like Jamie Oliver now yeah, he's one of mine because there's very little that Jamie Oliver will cook that you don't have in your like in just in the press yeah. random and he'll say no more than I do if you don't like cinnamon just don't put it in yeah. things like that put in nutmeg yeah no yeah. like we'd say that to me that's why I said about recipes I'd never look at a recipe and go cook it but some people might look at a recipe and go oh the cinnamon and that I don't want to cook it but it doesn't it, it, like 
my idea of cooking is the cinnamon does not make that be what it is, if that makes sense. Yeah, Whereas so you can do it. Out of... If you're baking a cake, if you don't put baking powder in, the cake won't rise. Yeah. Things like that. That's You can do it out of it. And the ingredients I copped you using the most, eggs. You love your scrambled eggs. Yeah. Uh, mint. Yeah. You use a lot of mint. Yeah, growing on, I was growing on an old bike. Back. Home, out the really? Back, yeah. <laughs> it was my father. I think it was my father's bike here. Mint well. is mental. It goes Mint everywhere. is great. Um, what other ones? Your soups are spectacular. And I mean, soup seems so easy, but the little toppings you put in your soups and the, the pictures, like the two I mentioned there, we'll have a look. Uh, the pea and mint is lovely, yeah. Pea and mint. But but it's the chopped pecans and the, and the I know, parmesan. Yeah. Or even with the leek potato and pumpkin, sesame and walnut. Like, I have all those, but I never even think about them. No, no, no. I suppose I soup. started doing that because I give up bread. So, so like, oh, a okay. lunch was, you come in to Ryan's yeah. at lunchtime and you get your soup and your two slices of brown bread. Because you have to, because it's yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Whereas my thing with the toppings is, it's like a deconstructed bread. So you basically go in. It's like, when you take a spoonful, it's like as if you're actually dipping a bread There's in. a bit of crunch. Yeah, it's a bit. like So, oh. it's like a minestrone soup, where there's like, it's, or a pearl and barley. Yeah. Um, it's got the texture. Pearl barley soup. Yeah, it's got the texture. Like. So that all came out of necessity. That's all that came out of yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, that was it. Or yeah. sticking an egg on top of it or stuff like that. Yeah, I saw the post egg. egg yeah, because yeah. you, yeah. you had a mint soup with, with, ham, with ham. Ham. And, and then, then the next one was one. the yeah. post egg, yeah. Yeah, very but impressive. Like pea soup. Pea soup is literally a bag of frozen peas, st- vegetable stock, boil it up and whiz it and even put a bit of mint and flavour it up. That's, Season it That's pea soup. Yeah. And it freezes. And it photographs so well. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a food that, that, that holds a memory for you or a drink is there something that when you cook it it brings you back to like when you were a child or your, your youth in Leitrim is there anything that you, you love like that ratatouille moment have you seen ratatouille yeah you know when he eats the, the, the ratatouille yeah. there is but my father wouldn't be one for cooking all the time yeah. but he had like staples that he used to have when he was a young lad now I've never made it because I don't want to because I know I won't make it right okay. but it's simple it, it sounds mad so it's like you get a get rasher get a big pot throw it in with butter you cook the rasher on the bottom then you put your raw spuds fill it with water cook it off and then like we'd say let the water nearly absorb into the spuds and that's it and it is unbelievable what's it called is there... there's nothing to it but he said <laughs> but like, is there a name on it like, is no it... no no. It's he said literally dish. years ago he would when they saw their father coming home with the lump of rasher they'd all sit around there's 12 in his family and he said they'd literally see that and they'd be just Wait. Know, know what they're getting and they're waiting <laughs> but like that's it's it, like it, it, it's not like it is a nothing dish but it's just incredible it's simplicity it's incredible yeah. and like the best part of it is you know yourself the way like I know I said I'd rash or the saltiness or rasher but it's the kind of the gnarly bits at the bottom yeah, yeah. Oh. but another one was on a Saturday as my father again was uh, onions and bread I remember the three of me my, my older sister the brother and me and the baby and then my father and my mother would be below on the bed shouting up at us yeah. but uh, we literally put the pan so he cooked the onions and then he put the bread on top of it and he, like, in the pan in the pan and he put a plate on top of it oh, and then the bread <laughs> would be soggy but it would soak up all the kind of moisture from the onions and then the parsley touching the pan would be crispy oh, oh, oh god <laughs> I am definitely making that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's like it's the simplest thing ever. And I, 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 again, at that, I haven't made it since because yeah. I know I won't do it justice. Like it, I'm it, definitely when you think that. of it, like yeah, you know, it was. They're the two things I think. They're the two comfort things. They remind you. Yeah, yeah. That my first memory of food would be that. Yeah. And my granny's bacon and cabbage. Was it funny? Spuds, bacon and cabbage. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's it. It's the simple thing. A leech and bite, huh? No pasta, no risotto. <laughs> no basil. <laughs> no mint in the bite. <laughs> and if you had to choose, I know we talked about eggs and, excuse me, eggs and mint. If there was an ingredient you couldn't live without or you couldn't do without, what, what would you be picking? Uh, between, I'd have to have two, cheese and eggs. Okay. And cheese in particular? The only cheese I don't is blue cheese. Okay. That's it. Everything I mean, else. Cheese. Uh, goat funny. cheese. Sorry, goat cheese. Alone. Cheese has come up in every single yeah. podcast. Yeah. Everybody loves cheese. And yeah. eggs. Eggs. Yeah. yeah. Eggs has been my, again, going back to, we'd say, when I started the training. I'd still that do it now. I'd have three boiled eggs in the morning. Really? Maybe it would be a bit of butter and a cup. And that's it. Three yeah. boiled eggs. Three boiled eggs, yeah. Jesus. But that's like, we'd say, if I, and some days if I didn't have that, I'd know what in me. Mm. You'd feel it physically. I'd feel it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My missus says the same about eggs. She says, if you have eggs, you can make breakfast, you can make lunch, you can make dinner. Everything. Yeah, there's nothing eggs can't do. I say, like, one of the lads, uh, 
he was talking to some kind of it's not Joe Wicks there's another famous fella that he kind of does and someone posed the question to him uh, make breakfast without eggs and he goes yeah no problem but he says <laughs> part of one of the ingredients it wasn't like an egg he was putting on yeah. the bloody board but eggs, eggs was the basis yeah. of you know so there's very little that would be eggs wise yeah breakfast is all, all around eggs we love our eggs at home very good. And on the flip side of that, if you had to get rid of something, is there, a, is there an ingredient you hate? I was looking through your Instagram and I think you use everything. But is there something that you don't like? Is there something you'd I never don't like with? lamb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Funny, I used to love lamb years ago. I don't know why. I used to love lamb chops. I, I even think back to, like, we'd say cooking years ago. At yeah. Home. I used to, I remember cooking a lamb cutlet and sprinkling curry powder on it and cooking it under the grill. I still remember it now. <laughs> yeah. Just getting it off the grill and you know, going like a caveman yeah. chewing at it. Like, but now even the smell of lamb is funny. What is it? <sighs> Look at. Did anything we, happen? We, like, we, is it the idea of it? We grow. We, I grew up on a farm, yeah. and my father decided once that he'd go in the sheep and lambs and stuff like that, and bottle feeding lambs. Just like, can't do it. I, I don't know. But that's oh, from no, that. I'd, I'd be like you. I'd, if, if I yeah, had a lamb. from that. But like, I would have done with the the cattle, with the the calves and stuff like that. But it didn't put me off a good steak. Like, yeah. but, but it's even it's the smell of the lamb cooking. It just does not stand with me for some reason. Really? Yeah. That's interesting, isn't and, it? But I, lo- I look at a lamb rack and I go, Jesus, I wish I liked lamb. <laughs> because all the master chef and everything, the la- rack of lamb, minted Trimming rack of lamb. And yeah. Trap, yeah. And every time they cut it, you're kind of thinking, oh, is it going to be red inside? You know? It's... But no, I, I, I don't know why. I don't know what the smell is. Just can't. Just can't, can't it. hack it. Funny. Yeah. You just have a thing for cute lambs. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. And tell me, you were contacted and you did a feature on the journal. Yeah. How did that come That's about? That's a good way to go. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, just literally messaged me. Saw your page. That was all, yeah. Um, it was her job. It was in to the journal. There's a section in the journal where it's not the main feed. Do you have the journal? Uh, I, I I go on to it. I'm yeah, it, it doesn't come up as much. I don't, I, I don't know how they're still doing it anymore, but it, it used to be a section in where like, we'd say... There'd be cooks, or there'd be bakers, or there'd be artists and stuff like that. Yeah. And the green was pick five meals that you like to talk about, them and then they post it, and that was it. And did you get much of a response to it? Yeah, it was good, yeah. Um, like, again, at the time when it happened, I hadn't a clue how to <laughs> build a profile or anything like that. I was like, this gossip from Leacham coming out, people looking at their food and going, what the hell? No, it came across very well, I've said. We'll, we'll tweet it out to everybody. So yeah, it. no, it is. It is. Look, it was, again, it is something that. Great we place. all feel proud yeah. nearly when you do something like you win a county final and stuff like that and then you're man the match and, yeah. but I'm not putting on the same pedestal as that no, I know but still a national broadcaster coming and asking yeah. to give five recipes yeah like really no cool. one knew who like there's another chap there Vinny's Food he's yeah. on Instagram as well he's actually a mead fella he's incredible he's about 18,000 followers on Instagram if, you, follow, get him if you look him up he's class Vinny's Food Vinny's Food yeah he is like he'd be you look at my food now he'd be like uh up again I'm looking at him going class okay. and you think you're looking at me going wow Yeah. so I have the wow factor as well <laughs> don't worry no but he is he's top class and he's mean and he's like me he's an auto father that's why I just follow him regular job yeah, yeah. yeah. just mm, follow him look and stuff okay we might, we might as, as hard as it is we might move away from the food let's talk a little bit drink so you take a drink you have a pint in front of you Carlsberg yeah Carlsberg yeah are you, are you, would you be into drink uh, look it's just like, as in from a taste point of view do you drink wine I do, yeah, but I wouldn't be a wine connoisseur now or anything. But um, would you be trying to match your food with wines, or is... no? I wouldn't have a clue. Really? I wouldn't really. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Um, I wouldn't go out like looking for my breakfast wine and <laughs> your lunch <laughs> wine and dessert wine and <laughs> stuff like that. Breakfast and lunch wine. It's a different, different. Well, breakfast years ago <laughs> might have been two o'clock. You know. Yeah, true. <laughs> but would you? Would you know what goes red? What goes white? Like, would you? Have I would. Yeah, I would. I. We'd say you'd know. Like, we'd say if you had a venison, you'd know the type of wine that go yeah. with that or stuff. But I. I actually, my father-in-law, um, they have a house in France okay. in Cahors. It's called. If you've ever heard. Yeah. Of yeah. It. It's good wine country. Yeah, it's yeah. class. But at that, we went to a couple of vineyards out there, and I never knew the whole thing. I used to think about wine, you know, go and smell a wine, you'd be looking at it, <laughs> you know. But actually, going up there and then putting the different wines out in front of you and, and smell, appreciating them, yeah. oh, it's it's incredible, yeah. it really is. And would you be would you be kind of inspired to go and learn more about wine? Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. 
I've even looked to be say, grow my own wine and stuff like really? that. Or grow my own wine, grow my own grapes and stuff, yeah. Have you had a greenhouse? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We might edit that out in case Claire was listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't put that in. So, but what you you like and how we met before I knew you through Instagram was you just come into here in Rhines where we are now and you'd ball and shout at Liverpool and you'd have a couple of pints and that would be it. Never ball and shout. <laughs> Trying to make me out to be this. <laughs> no, I come down, I used to love it. Like, I come down and have five or six pints. Watch the match. Watch the game. And that'd be over the time home, to yourself. And that's it, yeah. 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 Um, now, I suppose the last while everyone's kind of drinking at home, you'd have not too many, but you'd have a few cans at home. It's not the same. People would. It's not the same. No. 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 Um, the, even just the talking shows about the match with people. It's no, gone. I actually am the opposite. Oh, I, okay. I, I love football. So I love even, like, we'd say Gaelic or hurling and soccer. It's football. But, uh, <laughs> I don't like actually watching a game with anyone else because if you're watching a game with somebody, so say I'm watching a game with someone who has absolutely no interest in the game and they're talking to me, I, I can't be that person to just go, well, yeah, shut up, I'm watching the game. I have to feel to talk to them, you know? So come down on your own, I might look like a raving alcoholic sitting on my own at the bar, but uh, I'd say you probably saw me a few times down at the back place and I was sitting at the bar with the telly looking around you. Giving you the eyes, you know, the <laughs> and I'd be coming around with the cards. <laughs> uh, do you remember your first ever drink? Uh, yeah. Well, I I remember the first time I got affected by drink. Okay. <laughs> I was in uh, first year in the, the old gym. So uh, it was a disco, twelve, school disco, thirteen, 13 years <laughs> And I was uh, we thought the bright idea of having a nagging of Jamaican rum, oh, the black geez. rum. <laughs> <laughs> you can see where this is yeah. going. So I fell asleep in the toilet and my feet was out the bottom of the door and uh, <laughs> was lucky enough to be woken by the principal, oh, mind. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But uh, lucky my brother was a pillar of... Uh, he was uh, he was a great man, the principal's eyes because of football and he told him and it's th- thinking... Bring James. He'd be all right. No, this was not that night. This oh. was after this. Yeah. Right. So I got brought home, but... I prefer if you told me mother or father because I got blackmailed for a while. For the time. Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> do this, do that for me, I won't tell, you know. But anyway, that was my first bad experience with drink. First time drinking in front of my mother and father was about 15 or 16. Really? My mother's... With, the, with their blessing? No. Mother, look, cut, nearly cut me with a really? look. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nearly cut me with a look. Jesus, yeah. and you, what, what, what was the scenario? Like, why, how it was you? her birthday and I just said, just dead. But I'd say she probably more thinking that everyone is there and thinking yeah. letting me drink. You know the way the, the proud Irish that. mammy. And do you have a favorite pub? Uh, well, uh, not just because we're here, but I mean, in having two and a half years, Ryan's is the local. Yeah, that's my local. Yeah, because it was in. I lived in Screen for five years, and Fox's was my local, and Paddy, Paddy and Mickey Ryan were the very good. Good men to have a beer with. Two bios. You have a good pint with yeah, and a good chat. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, definitely um, before all this kicked off, I'd come down and watch the match. Watch the match, a few pints. It's big, enough, it's big enough as well on the match, Sam. You, you can be on your own. People it is, yeah. Look at you, yeah. And there's, like, there's every different type of person in here. Yeah. You know, and that's the beauty of it, I think. Yeah. Hopefully, you get back to them when all this nonsense passes over. And tell me, you go out you, you go out overnight and you have a couple of naggins of Jamaican back room. <laughs> What's your uh, hangover cure? Do you have one? Over cure. I used to. I was actually only talking about this the other day. I don't know if you remember them. They're little black bottles of Lucasade. Small little black Gingzeng. No. Oh, uh, I. I've never seen them. I've, there are. I've looked them up online, and they are there, but they're long gone. But it used to be just like a bottle of sugar. So it was like, do you know that film Limitless? Yeah. It made you feel like that. You just drank <laughs> it, and you were like just ready to chase the sun. Can you see Lucasade? Yeah, it was. It was Lucasade. It was just full of caffeine and sugar. Yeah. Um, nah, would was, you let yourself have a have a hangover now with two girls? Uh, uh, not a hangover, but like you wouldn't be lying panned out on the couch. Yeah, you'd kind of be just functioning, you know, because you have to. Yeah, but we don't look. We wouldn't go out, and um, Claire wouldn't be a big drinker, and um, so we'd go out and we'd so say if we had a hotel break, we'd literally go down, we'd enjoy the food and my one or two, and the that'd be it. Yeah. That'd be it. Yeah, we'd never. Like, a lot of the time, we'd be slagging each other. We're going home with the bottle of wine. Yeah, more than actually drinking it you yeah, know see, we're kind of gone the same way where we, like, we enjoy a session I'd rather spend the money on the food yeah yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to love going like concerts like, we love both of us love going to concerts stuff yeah. like that and we would kind of overindulge that way 
you know yeah. we've often gone to Dublin and had no accommodation booked I remember <laughs> it was like no room at the inn it was like it was like the, the Christmas the Jerusalem and all that we were around everywhere and we ended up getting this taxi man home and um, having the best crack ever yeah. was, I think it was 60 euro home but we were singing Craig David the whole way home <laughs> and he gave us the Craig David CD and we were in the house, into the house and started playing oh here started so drinking again okay I think uh, after Jesus, Craig David at 3 or 4 in the morning after. <laughs> we leave it there, we'll have a little break, and uh, we'll come back in just a couple of seconds for part two. Welcome back to the Chopping Block Podcast, where my guest is Insta Chef James Dorrigan. So every week I ask my guests for a recipe. It can be something they cook or something they love having cooked for them. I never know in advance what they're going to give me, so this is always a little bit nerve wracking. So when they give me the recipe, I'll take it, I'll cook it, I'll share it on my Instagram story. Uh, everything I've cooked so far has turned out very well, but the law of averages means that one is bound to be a disaster. Hopefully not this week though. Whatever happens, you can watch along on my Instagram story. The one thing I know this week is that I'll be under serious pressure to cook this as well as James would, and particularly to make it look as good as he would. So James, what have you got for me to cook? Uh, I, I, I like a good fake away. Okay. So I used to be, I'd say, a devil for the special fried rice. That okay. was my go to a thing of curry sauce but I made my own version of it with sweet potato as the rice lovely so it just kind of it just shows you that what I think is food is a texture as opposed as well as a taste so like the sweet potato would but it's just a little bite to it kind of just substitute the rice and you know it's kind of not going to be sitting in your stomach all night okay but uh, yeah no it's literally just the hardest part is the actual prep because you have to actually cube up the sweet potato okay talk me through it peel the sweet potatoes you just peel the sweet potato and you slice it so into cubes I don't know what we small enough cubes I don't know what size you say is there, is there a picture on your Instagram there is yeah I'll find it but you don't have to uh, you don't have to be completely precise you don't have to like we'd say get a ruler out <laughs> yeah no trust me that won't be happening but it's uh, it's simple I'd say from prep to bowl it's 20 minutes excellent um, you should the only thing you might go wrong would be you might over cook the sweet potato and okay. it could turn into like a mash yeah, okay. <laughs> That's, okay so what, what do you do with sweet potato when you keep it so you boil up water so when you whenever, when you have everything chopped so you have a sweet potato chop and then all the veg so whatever veg you want like what would you put I have green beans mange too um Onions, mushrooms, red pepper, yellow pepper, and then there's an egg through it, okay. and then there's prawns. Okay, brilliant. And sometimes you might, if you want, stick a bit of pork into it if you want. It's kind of what you have lying around. Whatever you have left lying around, yeah. Cool. Um, or again, open to interpretation, whatever you like yourself. That's okay. the way I go. So just have it all, once it's all ready to go, boil your water, get a wok, put uh, sesame oil in it. Sesame oil is lovely. Toasted sesame oil if you can get it. And then just throw all the veg in. With Sorry, the water, are you putting... No, just it say boil the water first. Sorry, oh, yeah, for the sweet potato cubes. Right. So once the when when the, as the water is boiling, just heat the wok with your sesame. Oh, oil I get you. Sorry, yeah. And then put your veg in to the sesame oil. So hold back the sweet potato. Obviously, that's for the water. Okay. Put your veg into the wok and then add in uh, grating ginger, grating garlic, and then cook it all through. It only takes a couple of minutes. You still want a bit of a bite in it. Um, hold your prawns off till the end because. Prawn, like we'd say, I use pre cooked prawns because it's handier just to chop them up in small bits. Yeah. But you can use. Oh, so you're chopping them up? Just chopping them up, yeah. Lovely. And leaving, like, with some. Oh, yeah, it's your special fried rice. Yeah. yeah. Chop them up. The prawn, the bigger prawns, the king prawns, yeah. or whatever. But if you can get the little, you can get the frozen shrimp. Do you ever see them? Yeah, yeah. Get them, just throw them in. Hold okay. They'll be fine. Um, and then there's coriander, coriander, cumin, turmeric, rice wine vinegar. And fi- Chinese five spice, it's top. The other, I think I have everything there. Yeah, Chinese five spice is lovely. I, I'd have to check the date of my rice wine vinegar. That's probably sitting there. I found. <laughs> I, say, I can't remember where it was. I think it was actually uh, Nevin McGuire. Did you ever watch Nevin? Yeah. He went. He done his Irish trails. He went yeah. to some restaurant and he said, "Don't put the Chinese five spice in until near the end, because if you do, it will take away the flavors. Will get lost in it, okay. and it's it is it's unreal." the difference it makes mm-hmm. so leave that to the last and uh, literally put your sweet potato in cook them for a couple of minutes five minutes maybe drain them and then put the sweet potato in mix it around hop it out into a bowl put a bit more sesame oil in crack an egg in mix it and then pop everything back in and just mix it all together that's, that's it lovely that's it 
uh, it frees as well. It stays in the fridge. And, uh, and very healthy. Yeah. And it still has, like, it's mad. When you go and eat it, you'll still get the same taste as a... It'll fill that need. It will, yeah. Yeah. But it's not even a need. It's just like... It's not even a need for a takeaway. But it's just like a mind, like a, a mind thing. A comfort thing. I don't know. I don't actually know what it is. I think you associate it with certain times, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's showing that you don't need the takeaway. Yeah. You can actually just have the same comfort with healthy food. Do, do you put soy or anything into it? No. no. No, I, I. So the rice wine vinegar is the rice wine vinegar is, is is lovely. Yeah, it's it's I got that in super value. It's the, and is it saucy or is it is it dry? Sorry, I forgot the um, actual stock cube. Just put a stock cube in and then a splash of water. Oh, okay. it's, and then that the, gives a bit of moisture. Yeah, because the sweet potato then when you pour it in will actually nearly suck up like the rice. Okay. Similar because it's so small. Um, but it won't. No, no it's not saucy. It's excellent. Yeah. James Corrigan's noodles with sweet potato and all the veggies that you want and prawns. Lovely. I think the only thing you might get the, the sweet, sweet potato. Potatoes. Just I do have a tendency to leave things in too long for fear of they might be undercooked. You won't have to worry about this being undercooked. Yeah, the sweet um, potatoes. The sweet potatoes, yeah, because it wouldn't be hard. No, because they're, they're, they're if you so cut them, if you cut them fine enough, and you, if the water is boiling and you pop them in, even after two or three minutes, good they'd be good enough because you're still putting it into the you're still putting it into the heat. With the vegetables as well. So they'll keep yeah. cooking. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, I look forward to cooking it. Uh, that'll be on my Insta story. Uh, but when this comes out, it'll be on my story and then it'll be on my highlights after that, if you're listening the days after. Um, yeah, sounds good. I'll have to <laughs> maybe look, keep looking for a bowl like yours to make it look as good. Uh, Sorry if I made it sound complicated. No, not at all. The it's, recipe it's, is a lot more easy no, to follow. No, it's simple. <laughs> it's, it's simple. I'm just, every time I get to this stage, I'm always picturing it in my head and I get distracted. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> Do that later on. Okay, so we're coming to the end. Let's finish off. If you're an optimist, we'll call it your perfect meal. Or if you're a pessimist, we'll call it your death row meat dinner. As a base, I'm giving you three courses, drinks to match, but you can add or change anything you want. It's your meal, so do as you wish. You can cook the whole thing yourself if you want, or you can have it cooked for you. You can have your favorite dishes from restaurants. You can have your own amazing soups or your fish dishes. You can have a mousse bouches or a mousse bouches. I don't know what that plural is. You can have sorbets. You can have anything you want. A mousse bouche. A mousse bouche, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, James, what have you got on your perfect menu? Uh, and you can have a drink to start. Perfect menu is not going to be at any special, like, mad thing. Okay. It's all, I think, comfort and nice. Good. We went on a mini moon. So this, it's not, a, like, it is a three course, but we went to the mini moon and we went to Kenmare, the park, the, the Brennan, you know, yeah, the Brennan Brothers, it's class. But we said, we, we didn't stay in it, we just went in for the, the, the meal. But we were in the bar first and I got a little bit of whiskey. What just, is that? I, I didn't, I don't know, I can't remember what it was, <laughs> because I said to the barman, just, he said, give me the, one of the top whiskeys, but not, like, something that's going to yeah. be 45 euro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to be a cheapskate, but just like me. And they brought out these root veg chips, uh, be, like beetroot and all and carrot and all these. Just as a nibble. As a nibble, and it's oh, class. And what just, was doing? Just a little bit of salt. Just, and but uh, yeah, but like, I, there was flavors on. It. Like, and even Claire said to me today, said, "Make sure you mention the, <laughs> the beetroot crisps that we had in the bar before that." Like, but that's amazing. The small things. They made an impression, you. yeah. And like, I can't remember what we had for the main course. Do you know? But they'll stick with you. But they still can be, and so that would be what I'd like to have. And then uh, I, scallops is my all time starter. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. on their own. But I had when we were in the greenhouse, I had a scallop dish. It was like, um, but it, again, it was the like the little bits that's with it. It was like cucumber oils, and it was all little bits. But the scallops are just top class. Yeah. Just the, they're, they're the closest thing to a meat that nearly is a monkfish that you. Knowing find. them in the greenhouse, are probably hand picked scallops. From, they are, yeah. yeah. They are actually literally the same. It says it on their hand picks. Yeah. But I must say, I, I was in London, it could be 10 years ago, uh, and we went to like a food market and I got a scallop in the shell with the roll and the whole lot on it, just with a little plastic fork. Uh, unbelievable. 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 Yeah. Just I, the freshness of it was I class. love scallops. Yeah, I, I cook, cut the roll off. Okay. Because yourself doesn't like the roll. Yeah. Doesn't really bother me either way. Yeah, but um, with, what way were they cooked in the shell? Just I don't know what way they cooked them. It was literally like you know, it was all you know, the, the, this artisan-y kind of yeah. um, food market. You go in, you get your wines and you get your um, 
ciders and there was alligator and there was ostrich yeah, and all that. Yeah. You just literally go in and get your shell. So I don't know whether like it was literally cooked on the shell, whatever way they done it. Daddy. But yeah, the roe is a texture. It's not. A, it's not kind of like a mush, really, isn't it? Yeah. So your starter's going to be scallops, whatever way. You don't care. You just love scallops. I don't care. Whatever way they serve it up to me. I want death row. So you're, you're not cooking it yourself? No. No, okay. I'm on death row. Fuck that. <laughs> what are you going to drink with it? I'll have uh, Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Nice cold glass Pinot Grigio. Bottle. <laughs> Bottle. It's death row. <laughs> uh, main course, uh, T-bone steak. Lovely. T-bone steak. We were even getting them down home in the local butcher when it was banned. Well, <laughs> and it never tasted as nice. <laughs> you were saving the bone and actually just peeling it off. <laughs> it's mad looking back now that they banned Oh, it's unreal. Yeah. It's unreal. And, what are you gonna and have I remember like, even eating the marrow out of the... You know people like would say... Yeah, yeah. That, but I even remember eating the marrow out of the bone. It was that class. class. Just, again, Whereas now you'd pay for the marrow. Yeah. Sense, sense, sense. Again, simple. Onions and mushrooms. Medium rare. Uh, medium rare as close to rare as you can yeah uh, garlic spuds yeah oh Jesus creamy <laughs> oh, garlic garlic spuds cheese and then go out the night and smell like garlic all night <laughs> but like it's still a tradition in our house for years and it always is a steak Saturday yeah, yeah. steak Saturday Very good. and it depends on if we have spuds with it my father doesn't have tea if we have chips he has tea <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> He's a gas man. You could put up. Oh, you could put up. You could put up the biggest feast going. And if you don't have the kettle boiled, you may, you may as well just throw it in the bin. He's only. He's a gas man. Just a kind of a, just your country, your country farmer. Country farmer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to drink with your T bone? The T bone. Um, I actually. I, I've never had it with a T bone, but I think it will go well. It will be like it's a it's an oatmeal um, a brine. Oh, do you know the, oh, the oatmeal stout? Yes. Yes, I, I think that I just I think it tastes well with it. The richness of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would. There's no sauces around with these now. This is just the steak as it is. I I don't put sauce in my steak. You know, pepper sauce around. Like I that. like it if I'm dipping chips. And even yeah, that, it's, but that's it. It's Medium rare is like the juices is the sauce basically. You're, you're killing it with the sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. And the the, the oatmeal sounds lovely. I think that's like seven five percent of it. Isn't it? That's, strong enough that's, good. Why she, that's why it's beautiful a good big kick with the, with the tea bone <laughs> and then you finish that are you going to have dessert yeah uh, it's not like a fancy pants dessert or anything there's a coffee a Carrick and Shannon we ever in Carrick and Shannon yeah if you go do you know where like, the Moon River you know the, the, the harbour in Carrick and Shannon it's usually for the, the, the land, you know the landmark yeah over from the landmark is if you're walking back there's a place coffees it's a coffee shop you ever okay. saw it's right on the corner beside Cryan's I just remember going with no other years ago and going in and getting the meringue with two cases with cream in the middle of it smacked together and yeah. that was down on the plate that's that's just that's no it. fruit or anything no else? nothing that's it cream and meringue and it used to be kind of it'd go soft in underneath for the cream oh, yeah. and there. So oh. crunching the outside that's and soggy inside just yeah like an armadillo which is <laughs> in the diamond <laughs> right, go but that was it like this simple again memories it's not like a I suppose we all think of the Michelin star food we get served, but at the end of the day, we all go back to the things that you got. As kids, yeah. 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 I'd still happily sit at home. Like, I was granny's pet growing up, and I was the baby in our house. Um, Five, six years between me and my brother. And then my next cousin is, could be 10 years between us. So you're the baby the whole family. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time with grandmother, but like, I remember her bringing me up toast and Jaffa cakes <laughs> what to, the a be- combo. to the bed toast and Jaffa cakes and a cup of tea and literally I'd stay in bed until lunchtime dinner and I'd get called down and it'd be floury spuds bacon and cabbage cooked in one, yeah. in one pot and, and you can't and the dog sitting drooling with a puddle of drool underneath them looking for the skins <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a great wages I can actually picture the whole thing you can see the whole family <laughs> and my uncle giving out then go away dog really. and your father making sure the teapot is on <laughs> oh, stop. very good uh, would you have a drink afterwards are you happy now no I'd have a whiskey after have a whiskey. crested tin I love crested tin very good the, straight up uh, ice yeah straight up straight no up. ice and just sit there and enjoy it. yeah I, there's a, one of the lads at home for years we used to go out and treat ourselves to a hamlet and a crested tin <laughs> <laughs> what a weird combination <laughs> And this would be like maybe after drinking 10 yeah, pints of bud. It's and just an Irish version of brandy and cigars, yeah, yeah. really. A few Zambucas. And, but I don't know why. That's, I think, Crested Ten. But it was always kind of a nice, subtle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, green spot is another one. Yeah. Got a sample box of a Christmas and I got green spot's class. That's great with yeah, class. Well, I, it's your meal is lovely. It's a it's a real throwback and like that you can have all the fancy drink you want or fancy food you want. But there is something just so nice about the things yeah. that you grew up with and you love, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Scallops, obviously, I didn't grow up. Can't pick them with the river below the house around. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the scallops. Yeah. You brought me away on such a journey of memories there. I forgot about the scallops. Okay, I, that's it. That's a, It's a great meal. I'd happily join you. and I'd, You probably wouldn't want me, but I'd come over at the end and have a whiskey with you. Um, okay, so just a reminder, James's Instagram page is at cookwithjames. So that's at cook underscore with underscore James. Um, I heartily recommend going over and following him for great recipes and a bit of mouth-watering inspiration for your own cooking. Be warned, though, it's very lucky that your food won't look as good as James makes his look, but it'll be fun trying. Um, if you're interested in what he did with CBF and their weight loss programs, follow them on Insta at My Complete Body Fitness. Uh, James lost four and a half stone with them, and that helps out with them, so it obviously works. Thanks to you, the listener, for staying with us to the end. If you like what you've heard, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, all the usual places, and YouTube as well. Uh, we're across all the usual social media platforms too. Just search for the Chopping Block Pod on your favourite. And if you'd like to re- recommend us to your foodie friends by sharing in your own feeds, well, that would make us very happy. Remember, James's version of Special Fried Rice is now on my Insta story and it'll be on my highlights. So if you want to give it a try, it'll be there. If you do cook it, take a photo, share it, tag me, the Chopping Block, and tag Cook with James in it as well. And we'll show it off for you to all our followers. So that's all for me. Thanks again, James. Uh, I really enjoyed that app. So it, was, it was good fun. Um, so farewell, everyone. Stay safe and we will chat to you next time on The Chopping Block.